Hi, I'm John Bunny from Buell Motorcycle Company. I've worked there for about 11 years and I've been involved with the uh, suspension development on just about every new model of Buell since the uh, 99 model year. I'm uh, currently managing the test department and uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the 1125R and the suspension on the 1125R and uh, how you can set it up to suit your riding style and your, uh, your preferences. Okay, as far as suspension adjustments go, the most important one is always spring preload. That's the adjustment that I'd like to start with. It's also the most common one to get adjusted as you change weight on the bike, whether you have a passenger or no passenger, or whether you have uh, saddlebags or cargo, that kind of thing, you want to adjust your rear preload. Okay, for the preload adjustment range, we have nine positions on the rear shock and 15 turns on the front. So we've got a preload setting that's going to work good for you. Use the chart and uh, pick your weight, how much you're going to weigh, plus your cargo or any passenger that you're going to have, and adjust it there to start with. It's real easy. You just take the seat off, two little bolts here. The seat comes right off. In the tool kit, handy little spanner wrench. Right here. So to reduce the uh, preload, just use the spanner wrench, and there's nine clicks. And depending on the chart and how much uh, rider weight and cargo weight I have on there, I can just set it to however many clicks I want to go. Rear rebound is done with a flat blade screwdriver in the bottom of the shock. You lightly bottom it, and then you count the number of turns out. It's a half, one, one and a half, there's two. Rear compression is uh, done with a three millimeter Allen wrench through the side of the bodywork. You count the number of turns from fully closed, and you back it out to your setting. Preload on the bike sets the attitude of the bike. Based on uh, whether the, the front is high or low or the back is high or low, that really changes the sharpness of the suspension as sharpness of the handling of the bike defines the characteristics of that. The front preload adjuster is at the top of the fork again. It's the outer hex, 19 millimeter hex shape. Uh, and that, that adjustment is done by backing it out counterclockwise until it bottoms and then counting the number of turns in to get to your desired setting. Okay, rebound damping on the forks is done with the adjustment on the top with a screwdriver. Front rebound, just like all the other damping, clockwise until it lightly bottoms. Count the number of turns out. There's a half, one, one and a half, one and three quarters. Same thing on the other side. Half, one, one and a half, one and three quarters.
Compression damping is one of those that you're probably going to want to change if you're going from a track to the street. Uh, compression damping, you want set generally fairly high on the track because you want to have that intimate contact. You want to be able to feel the ground surface uh, through the handlebars, and a higher compression setting will help you do that. On the other hand, if you're cruising on a freeway, you don't want to feel every single expansion joint. Compression damping is probably a good adjustment to back off to help the ride quality. The front compression damping is done similar to the rebound. There's a screw at the bottom near the axle. Increasing it is clockwise, decreasing it is counterclockwise. Okay, all this information is in the owner's manual, and there's tuning tips in there as well. Always uh, refer to your owner's manual and use it as a tool, just like the tool in the toolbox. The 1125R has a full range of suspension adjustment to suit any riding style. Personally, I like to road race, and I like the suspension set uh, a little bit firmer than what the, the owner's manual chart is, but we've given you a full range, and I encourage you to experiment and uh, find the best setting for you.